So today we have a 2014 Chevy Cruze. The complaint is that the vehicle will not go over 30 or 40 miles per hour, multiple warning lights, transmission shifting concerns, etc. I've done a quick health check of the vehicle under the hood, didn't find anything obvious, so I'm gonna move on to checking codes. Went ahead and checked the codes. We've got a engine control module, lost communication with the transmission control module. This ignition passed and failed, that's a problem. I'm gonna go to summary. Transmission control module is not communicating with the scan tool either, so we need to look further into that. Let's go ahead and start it up, see what's going on here. Yeah, starts and runs, seems to run okay. Got some warning messages and lights. All going to be related to the no communication with the transmission control module. So still going to look into that. So with the loss of transmission communication, I can shift into forward and reverse and the transmission kind of works, but it's in a backup state. This is kind of a limp home condition. So if I put it in reverse, it actually shifts really hard and slams in the gear. Bang! And as you can see, I have no indicator because there is no transmission con uh, control module communication, it can't report what gear it's in. So it will move. If I put it in drive, again, really hard shift, and it feels like it's in second or third gear, again, that's gonna be totally normal. Limp home mode condition. So here's the schematic for the transmission control module right there. I've got a constant battery voltage there, an ignition battery voltage there, and a constant ground there, as well as GM high-speed LAN communication circuits. So this should be a fairly easy diagnostic to find out why is this transmission control module not functioning. If I have power here, here, good ground here, and all good communication circuits here, well, it has to be a faulty control module. I wouldn't say that that happens very often. Um, really just gonna have to do some testing and see what we see and come up with a plan from there. So this is pretty cool and actually not that uncommon. Service information says it's right on top of the transmission with the selector shaft going through it. Now let's go look back here in reality. There is no module on top of that transmission as described by service information. So now I need to do a little research and see what's going on. So as I suspected, transmission control module is actually inside the transmission part of the valve body. That connector right there is where I need to get to to do all my testing. Also found the diagram is a little bit different, but still we have the same things. We have solid B plus, ignition B plus, we've got a solid ground, and we've got data communication lines. So still going to be the same diagnostic process. Terrible visibility, because that's what we deal with every day. Terrible visibility, terrible access. But once you get it disconnected, I can pull it up here. Looks like somebody has been in here before because it's sloppy dielectric grease and that's actually not a good thing for electrical connections. Again, I'll take my air wand. Pour all the excess grease out of that connector. you guys to know that dielectric grease is an insulator and is not actually for enhancing electrical connections. So let's look at that through a mirror. That connector is just full of grease and that is after I blew the grease out of it. So somebody really packed that thing full of dielectric when they shouldn't have. So run into a little problem. I can't seem to find the pinout view of this connector because all of the information that I'm finding for this car and for this transmission control module are for the wrong, the wrong module that would be on top of that. 
but that's not going to work. So now I need to pop open this connector and compare the terminal positions and the wiring colors to make sure that I'm testing the right circuits. Another problem is that since I could not find the correct in-out view of this connector, I also don't have the information as to which diagnostic test probes to use. So I went ahead and did some trial and error to see which ones are going to work the best for me. I don't want to use something too big and spread those terminals out. So according to the schematic, terminal 1 is my B plus hot at all times, terminal 2 is my ground at all times should be able to test right across these two and that light should light. Let's see. No light. And I just tested from the ground to B plus. is good so looking like my hot at all times B plus feed is open or I've got an open view. Also since I'm in here I'm gonna test those two ignition feeds. They should be hot with the key on. That one's good. That one's good. So we need to look at that B plus circuit. Um, Maybe we're going to find a blown fuse. So we're looking for fuse number one under the hood. So fuse number one, TCM, right there. So let's correspond that to the fuse block. Looks like right there. not blown. So let's do some further checking on that one. So I went ahead and put that fuse back in. I'm going to verify my test light is good, always. And it's hot on both sides of the fuse. So according to that wiring schematic, that power feed goes directly from the underhood fuse block directly to the transmission connector. So looking like we've got an open circuit here in this wire. Here's a little tip before I go much further. This connector at the bottom of the underhood fuse block, we should probably come in here and check that these are tight, always. Yeah, that's tight. That's tight. That's tight. So, I'm still going to have to dig deeper. I'm going to go ahead and take these out now so I can access the connectors underneath. I always do these by hand. I like to hit them with an impact gun, but this is some fragile plastic stuff. I don't want to be doing that. Just go until it feels loose. Push it in, push it down, it'll just engage the connector. There's 
those connectors underneath. It looks like one, maybe two of them stuck. It happens. Oh, look at that. See, I told you someone's been in here before. Someone's been in here. There we go. So, I don't know for sure that this is related to our problem. I'm gonna have to take a look at my pinout diagram to see just which one of these connectors is the one we're looking for. So according to the schematic, we're looking for connector X3, terminal 37. Here's a pinout view of that connector. And according to this, it should be a red and white wire on terminal 37, which disagrees with the schematic because I have an LUW or an LU LWE engine and it's saying that I should have a red and violet wire and I do have a red and violet wire at the transmission so a little concerning when the service information disagrees with itself but I guess that's what I have to work with. So on the vehicle that wire is terminal 37 and it is red and violet so that's good corresponding with the red and violet wire here. So now I need to do a continuity test from here to there with my meter and see if it is broken, a broken wire or something like that. Always do a self-test of your meter because it will screw you if you've got a problem. I'm gonna back probe gently. And back probe this one as well. And continuity is actually good, so that is very curious. I'm wondering why do I have no bar at the transmission connector? So when continuity is good, I'm really starting to wonder how tight is this terminal? So I'm using the correct test probe. It's not loose. So I'm a little curious as to what's going on here, so I'm going to go ahead and reconnect all this and test it again. those three main connectors. Always want to do this by hand. Connected everything. I'll test this for power again. Verify my test is good. It is. Okay, now I've got power. That's my ground terminal. But now I've got power. I bet if I reconnect this, the transmission control module will start working. this back on here.
So I was very curious why after did I remove this and disturb it did the problem go away and I actually did find the problem right here. Terminal 37, I don't know if you can see that, but it is bent. So this was caused by whoever did the repair on this connector. I can't really blame them because once you install this, it's kind of difficult. You know, you can't really make any adjustments to the way the connector is lined up. But most likely this was not in here just right. And when they installed it, it caused that terminal to bend. Really, all I need to do is just kind of straighten that back out, put it back together, and that should fix the car. Looking like it's fixed. So this is after I've cleared codes and put everything back together. as it should.